Okay, so this first question is from Alan. I'm impressed with the member mouse software. My question is this. Many of the things I read on the internet cover setting up a brand new membership site. However, what are some of the best ways or strategies for converting an existing well-established site to a membership model? Is it simply a case of un uploading all or most new content to an area restricted to members only? Um, so based on you, where you say, um, converting a, an existing well-established site to a membership model, that leads me to believe that you're currently not running a membership site. So I'm going to make that assumption. And that currently you just have a, a library of content um, maybe living offline, maybe it's a newsletter, uh, a, a physical mailing or a magazine subscription or something like that. But you have content, I'm going to assume you have content that exists and you're asking what are some of the ways to move that existing body of work to a membership model. So the first part of that is there's, there's not much difference in the, in the, phase one between starting a new site and doing this type of procedure. Um, and basically the similarities are that you are going to need to create your website. You're going to need to install WordPress. You're going to need to install member mouse. And then you need to figure out what you're, how you're going to price things. Okay. How am I going to structure my content? This is a major question that anybody is going to have to think about and answer when they're starting a membership site, whether you already have content that exists or it's all brand new. So you want to think about conceptually, what is the offer that I'm going to put in front of the customer? What are the tangible things that they're going to get access to? And what am I going to charge for that? Once you figure that out conceptually, that then translates very easily into what you need to actually configure within member mouse, right? So at that point, you'll know what products you need to create, what the price of the products will be, if there's a trial on the product. And you'll know when somebody purchases, a, purchases that product, what they should get access to, okay? So that part of the situation is the same whether you're starting something new or transferring over. Now, um, as far as a library of content, I mean, you kind of have, in some ways you have it just uh, easier than somebody just starting out from scratch because now you just literally, yeah, you upload your content into the structures that you've determined based on your pricing, your offers, and you protect it using the mechanisms in member mouse and then you just start selling it. Um, some of the things that, since you're not starting from scratch, some of the things that I would start to think about if I were you is ways that you can increase lifetime customer value because you've already gotten the ball rolling. You have a library of content, um, but there's ways that you can package that content up such that you can have entry level points that are lower and then you can have ways that where you can upsell people like products to different things. So you can either do this with your existing body of work and figure out ways. Okay. These five videos, these five posts or whatever they are, these are going to be my core product offering that I put in front of somebody. This is the first way that they're going to get to know me. And maybe one of your strategies could be, this could be a low price point or something like that to get them in the door. Uh, and then you can use an upsell sequence and package up the remainder of your content to be bundles that are taking aspects of that initial product. Like maybe you're, um, maybe you're drilling into one of the things that you cover at a higher level in that initial product and you drill into it and you have a whole separate product that is uh, going into more detail in that topic, 
right? So I think when you're, when you're getting into these later stages of business, it becomes more strategic thinking. Uh, what are the ways that I can, what are, what are more products and offerings that I can put in front of the customer? And really the, the part of the figuring that out is understanding what the customer is asking you for. So a lot of this becomes having the conversation, seeing what they're asking for, and then providing that. So I think that that's, that's all that's coming to mind right now in terms of suggestions for this scenario. Um, if anything comes up later on, I'll, um, I'll bring that up, but that's, that's it for now. <clears throat> okay, so this is from Andrew. Uh, the question is manual payment on the gateway. Is there an option plan to have such a thing? Um, manual payment on the gateway. So I'm going to make the assumption that you're saying, you're saying you want to be able to make a manual payment, accept somebody's payment through the gateways in the payment gateways interface and not member mouse. And you're asking, do we plan on supporting that if a payment is accepted on the payment gateway, gateway interface, will that then communicate to member mouse and let member mouse know that there was a purchase? Confirm in the chat that I'm understanding you correctly, your, your question correctly. I'm getting requests to pay by invoice, but I find it difficult to manage the setup and subscription settings, press comp package, and not all information is collected as if they did it did for Stripe, PayPal, except bank request offline, except payment. So uh, that particular scenario, no, we don't have any plans to support that. Um, but let me think if I can come up with a suggestion on how to make this easier for you. So you're getting a request to pay by invoice. And when you, when you say you have difficulty managing the setup of subscription settings, because the, the first thing that comes to mind is um, if you're accepting invoices, you could create a product in member mouse that is the specific price related to the invoice. Now, depending on how often you're doing this, that could get very messy. Like if you're just doing this once in a while, that could be okay because you would just be creating some products here or there. But if, you, if you're literally doing this as a normal part of your business operations, then yeah, it's not gonna be a good idea because you'll just end up with all of these um, uh, one-off products <laughs> related to these invoices. So yeah. Um, offline payment and then just press accept subscription. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so the short answer is no, we're not currently doing it such that we will, you'd be able to do that through gateway and member mouse will automatically accept it. So yeah, it, it seems like the best case in your scenario is that you'll just have to do your invoicing um, in your gateway and then comp the access rights within member mouse. Uh, and I know that's not ideal because you're not gonna have the transaction logged within member mouse. Um, so, um, but that's the best that I could suggest at this time for that situation. Um, this question is from Brandon. I have several loosely related services that wouldn't really work as membership levels. Currently I have them as bundles but a lot of things like welcome emails, et cetera, only work with membership levels. What's the best way to tie all this together? So you can, you can do work, welcome member, uh, you can do welcome emails with bundles. Okay. So uh, they're just, you just do it from a different place. So let me show you how to do that. So um, let me know in the chat if there's other specific, I'll show you how to do the welcome email, but let me know in the chat if there's other specific things you feel like you're limited to by using bundles. 
because uh, really I can't think of any limitations to using bundles. In fact, um, I think they're more flexible than membership levels. Actually, the only limitation is that um, you can't have automated upgrade, upgrade downgrade proration functionality using bundles. But since you're not attempting to do a membership level type thing, like a membership where there, you just really have tier, three tiers of service that are ultimately for uh, the same thing, it doesn't sound like that's gonna be an issue for you. But I'll demonstrate for you how to uh, do the welcome email for bundles. But let me know if the chat, in the chat, if there's anything else. Okay, so I'll go ahead and share my screen here. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, let's find a bundle that we want to do this for. Um, uh, so let's say this bonus lessons bundle represents the bundle that you're working with. So what I'm gonna do is go to developer tools and push notifications and create push notification. So the concept behind push notifications is there are events that occur in member mouse and here's a list of all the different events that can occur. Member added, member account updated, bundle added, uh, product purchased, uh, rebuild payment received, et cetera. Based on these events occurring, you can instruct member mass to take an action, one of which is to send an email, which is what we wanna do in this case. So the event is a bundle being added. Somebody purchases a bundle. Now you can do the same action for all bundles, or you can have specific actions that you wanna take just for specific bundles. So we'll do a specific bundle. So I believe we said it was bonus lessons, that the one we wanna work with, <clears throat> and then so we're saying when the bundle is added and the bundle is bundle lessons, perform the following action, which in our case, we wanna send an email. We wanna send it to the current member. And the from address is in this case gonna be support. Now you can control, you can control um, which email addresses show up here by creating additional employee accounts. And I'll, I'll show you that briefly uh, right after this. But what you can do is just start by using this template. I click the member added template and it just fills out this stuff. And now the, the benefit of using the template is that it gives you a starting point for smart tags. So these smart tags will allow you to, to address the customer by their first name and stuff like that. So we could say, um, thank you thank you for purchasing the bundle. And then something like, hi, first name. Um, and then provide instructions for how to access. Um, whatever you want to put in here, okay? So I'll go ahead and save that. Um, and now, if I go back to product settings and I copy this purchase link, and I copy this static link, and go to a new browser, and I go ahead and submit this order, Okay, so now if I go to the member uh, manage member screen, I see that this new customer is added. The bundle is on the account. And if I click in here and I go to the activity log, we can see that this email that we just sent up was sent to the customer and I can see um, the details here. Okay. Um, so that's how you would have a welcome email set up for bundles. Uh, now, regarding employee accounts, if you want to set up different email addresses that you can use as the from address on these push notifications, just go to general settings, employees, uh, click create employee, and then you can create as many of these as you want as from email addresses.
So hopefully that answers your question, Brandon. Uh, let me know if there's any follow-up on that. Okay, so this next question is from Bob. I want a user to sign up but not provide credit card information. How can I allow people to register without a credit card? Uh, so, I'm just checking the chat here. Uh, Brandon saying, that's amazing, thanks. Just wanted to say two, member mouse is literally a quarter of the cost of the membership system I came from, but yet is far better. Thanks so much for a great system. Uh, yeah, well, thank you so much, Brandon. I really appreciate you saying that, and I'm glad that it's working out for you. Um, and Andrew is saying, suggesting this uh, WP Events plugin. He says, this is worth looking you looking into regarding offline treatment. I have mobile payment Twint as a growing payment app, so understand you do not have plans. I use it for events with no issues. Okay, yeah, that's good to know, Andrew. Thank you for sharing that with me. Um, okay, so from Bob, talking about how to sign people up with no credit card. So the best, the easiest way to do this, and the best way to do it, is to just use a free membership level. Um, so you could create uh, a membership level called uh, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. But the, when people sign up for this, obviously they're not going to enter in a credit card information. And so once they're within in your system, now you can take as much or little time as you want before you put in front of them the offer that you want them to actually pay for and provide a credit card. So it, sh it should be very seamless and straightforward. Just start with a free membership level, have that be the thing that people sign up for um, from, uh, let me share my screen again here, from, from your landing page. But what you could do, membership levels, uh, what you could do if you, if you want to, you could make it an expiring membership level. So say that you would want to have people start paying you within 30 days. Okay, so let's just put 30 days here. So you're going to have, as part of your setup, when people sign up for this membership level, you could integrate with an email payment service, uh, email service provider, and have an autoresponder set up on that email service provider such that, you know, over a set number of days, you get them comfortable with you and your company. And then at some point you say, hey, glad you're enjoying the content, et cetera, et cetera. Here's a link to actually purchase, uh, purchase our course so you can stay and keep access, okay? So, and then you just put a link, a purchase link to a paid product. Um, if they never end up purchasing, purchasing that, if this membership level has an expiry setting of 30 days, then at 30 days, if they haven't made a purchase to something else, to a different membership level, a paid membership level, then their access will immediately be shut off. Uh, so that's, that's the easiest way I can think to do that. Um, and then Cindy just pasted a couple of resources in the chat uh, from our support center on setting, a, setting up a free member sign up. Okay, next, next question. This is from Wolf. <clears throat> I noticed there is a default free membership. I don't want there to be any free membership option. Can I remove this? Um, you can't remove the default free membership, but you don't have to worry. Um, it, just because it's there doesn't mean that people can use it. Um, 
So let's just find our default free membership here. Um, so the default free membership is, is an essential component to the system because what a lot of our customers do and how they set up their business is that they don't actually use membership levels like you're saying, they just use bundles. The thing is every single account needs to have a membership level associated with it. So if, even if you're just using bundles, uh, the default free membership level is there such that when somebody purchases a bundle as the first thing, Member Mouse knows what membership level to use on the account, right? And Member Mouse will use the default free membership level. So, and, it, and if you're not using, sorry, I'm looking at my screen, but I'm not sharing it. Um, if you're not using the default free membership level to protect content, it's not gonna matter if anybody has access to it because they're not gonna get access to any content through it, right? So even if uh, a person found a way to sign up for the, the default free membership level without you having announced it anywhere, which would be very unlikely because they would basically have to guess what this RID is in order to sign up for that free membership level. Um, even if they somehow found a way to sign up for that free membership level, if you're not protecting any content with it, they're not going to get access to anything. So, uh, but yeah, you can't delete it. Um, okay, so that's done. Uh, Follow-up question, another question from Wolf. Is there a way to hide bundles from the sales page if a user is not logged in? Yes. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna need the member decision access tag. So I'm gonna to go to the support page and type in member decision. smart tag and basically the, the concept of the member decision smart tag is it allows you to, if we look at this example down here, you'll have an opening tag and a closing tag and whatever content is in between the opening and the closing tag based on the attributes you add here will determine if that content gets displayed. So in this case, you're saying, I want to show or hide content based on whether somebody's a member. So we do have an attribute in the smart tag called is member and the value can be true or false. So basically if I, if I just copy this example and add a new page and I say, this is member decision test and I go to HTML and I paste in and I say is member equals true meaning they are a member I'll say hi hi first name that's fine hi first name you are logged in okay and then I'll do a second block and for this one, I'll do is member equals false. And I'll say, you're, you're not a member. Okay. So if I publish this and copy the link and go to a new browser window and visit that page. And, oh, sorry a incognito browser would know. So I'm logged out, so it's telling me you're not a member, okay? But now if I make a purchase, buy, it doesn't matter, I'll buy whatever. Okay, and then I visit that page again, we'll, we'll see that it says, hi, Eric, you are logged in. Okay, so that's how the member decision tag is super powerful. Um, I highly recommend 
taking a look through the different um, attributes that you have available to you because the member decision tag is a sent, is the fundamental tool that you can use to have a conversation with the customer, a dynamic conversation, because it allows you to show or hide content based on knowing all of this information. You can show somebody a message after a certain number they've been um, a member with you. You can show them a message if they have a particular bundle. This can be useful if you say, if somebody has this bundle, then I wanna tell them about this bundle, right? It allows you to dynamically make offers like that based on somebody's purchase history. Um, so, so it's super powerful. And you can also use custom fields too. So you can create custom fields where you track custom data and then have uh, content dynamically display, displayed based on the value of a custom data field, which can be very powerful. Okay. <clears throat> um, where am I? Okay, so Andrew is asking, what is the best way to handle renewals and to message those who expire? Okay, so the first thing I'll mention here is if you're talking about a subscription, uh, so MemberMass has automated overdue payment handling processing built right into the software. So if somebody's on a subscription and uh, a rebuild payment fails, Member Mouse will attempt to rebuild them two days later and three or four days later after that. It, it attempts three times and if it fails after three times, it'll cancel their access. At the same time, uh, what you can do is, again, going back to our push notifications, uh, you can create a push notification for rebuild payment failed and send an email to the member letting them know, hey, your rebuild payment failed. Can you please log in to your My Account page and update your billing information? So it's a good idea to set up a rebuild payment failed push notification so that the customer is notified as soon as their card fails so that they can log in, go to their My Account page, and turn their billing details. And, um, and as soon as they enter in their billing details, Member Mouse will, will attempt to rebuild it. But if, if they don't do that, Member Mouse will still attempt to go through a dunning process and re attempt to build a card two more times after the first attempt before automatically canceling access. So Member Mouse does a lot for you here in terms of managing, uh, making sure that you can collect on all the payments that you're supposed to and communicate with the customer if they need to update their card. Um, sorry, I, I thought I was sharing my screen again. I need to, okay, I, I wasn't showing much, but basically I was on the push notifications tab and I said, you just select the option, rebuild payment failed, and then you can send an email based on that. So that's, that's all I was looking at. Okay, so I have gotten through all the questions. So are there any more questions at this time before we jump off? Great, thanks Andrew. Thanks for joining. Okay. All right, great. Well, looks like we're all wrapped up then. So thank you all for joining and I hope you have a nice weekend and good luck with getting all the things set up you need to get set up. Of course, remember that you can always email our support team ask them any questions that you have. They're super helpful and they have a great response time. So anything that you need, be sure to reach out to them and they'll help you out. So thanks again for joining and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Yeah.
uh, support at membermouse.com is the email for them. All right. Bye.